Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made a fun card with the Snow Buddy Better stamp set from the July to December 2021 mini catalog from Stampin' Up! Uh, it is a fun little stamp set, um, definitely one that's got some cute sentiments and images in it. If you like snowmen or anything of that sort, um, or winter in general, it's a cute, cute set um, and one that's a lot of fun to play with. And again, like I said, it's got some really fun um, sentiments in it and um, it can definitely be used for more than Christmas cards. Now, I made specifically a Christmas, well, sort of specifically a Christmas card. Um, but you could definitely use this for winter birthdays or just a general, you know, how are you doing? And uh, I love winter. If you do, I don't love winter. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't really, I can't say I love, love winter. Fall is my favorite. But um, but this is a really cute set. And again, just a lot of fun and um, a, a good one to, to have as a, just a general winter, birthday, whatever, uh, fun little stamp set. Uh, from Stampin' Up. Uh, so, all right, so that is the stamp set that we're going to be using today. On the inside of the card, actually, I stamped a sentiment here from the Christmas to Remember stamp set. Um, so it's got the friends like you make this season special. Again, pretty Christmassy. Um, maybe not exactly, exactly. I mean, it doesn't come out and say Merry Christmas, but it, it's it's pretty Christmassy. So um, that was what I put on the inside of it, and I thought it was perfect with the, the cute little snowman friends on the outside of it. So, all right. Hey, Barbara and Bree and Danette, thanks for joining today. I appreciate y'all being here and um, saying hello. And uh, what else? I used, of course, my very favorite die set, the stitched rectangles dies. And I, in fact, used the third largest one to cut around the little snowmen. Um, for those of you that are fussy cutters, you can definitely snip around if you want to. I don't choose to because, I, as you all know, I'm not a fussy cutter. Um, I prefer to hack things out with dies because it's easy. <laughs> hey, Karen and Jerry, thanks so much for joining today. So I just ordered this set. It's really cute. You're going to have a lot of fun playing with it. Um, a couple other things that I used on this. The background actually has got uh, some, uh, well, I used a, I was going to say sponging, but I used a blending brush, so brushing, um, from the Adorning Designs Decorative Masks. This is a set of four masks, and one of them is a snowflake design. Um, so again, this is in the mini catalog, the new mini catalog, and um, I'm trying to remember what page it's on in there. I know it's in there. Um, but it, it sort of coordinates with a lot of the images in the little gingerbread stamp set that they have. So there's some, some that do coordinate with the um, designer papers and things from the gingerbread. But there's also this really fun snowflake image in there, or snowflake mask in there. So we're going to be using that one today. Um, I also used one of the little not little, wonderful snowflakes. These come in a pack of 20 and they're iridescent, kind of shimmery, shiny, pretty snowflakes. And again, these go with the whimsy, the whimsical trees uh, bundle technically, but they're snowflakes, so they go with a lot of different things. And I thought they were perfect, you know, one was perfect in the background uh, with our cute little snowmen. So again, these are the wonderful snowflakes and they're available in the current mini catalog from Stampin' Up. It's on page nine. All right, thanks y'all. <laughs> I knew somebody would come to the rescue. So, hey, Mary Ellen from Georgia, thanks for joining. And Debbie as well from North Carolina. I appreciate you being here. So that's really it for the card front. It's mostly just a lot of color. Well, not even a lot. A little coloring, a little stamping, and then the, the brushing on the background. Hopefully you can see it. I know lighting-wise it's kind of weird, um, but hopefully if I pick it up and kind of move it around, you can see the, the snowflakes that are inked on the background with the uh, blending brush. A um, couple things before we get started on the card. Um, if you are a newsletter subscriber of mine, you probably already know about this. If you are not, um, ta-da, we are doing, our team is doing a World Card Making Day event. So, hey, Penny, thanks for joining from New Jersey. Nice to see another New Jersey in, is that what they call us? I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of new to New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey-in, is that right? Anyway, <laughs> Karen will probably pop in and tell me because she knows all things New Jersey. <laughs> So, um, but we are doing a World Card Making Day event. It's just going to be fun. Um, everyone is welcome to attend. There's no charge for it. We're just going to hop on and do some live card making presentations, sort of like what you're watching today, only it's going to be from a whole different group of people. So it'll, there are, I think, gosh, I want to say nine of us so far that have signed up um, that are going to be doing card making presentations. Team members who aren't doing presentations are going to be sharing card projects throughout the day as well. Um, so we're going to have a Facebook page that I will be setting up. I haven't done it yet. 
but I will be getting it set up before the event. So World Car Making Day is Saturday, October 2nd, and the event's going to run somewhere around 9. Well, I know it'll start at 9 in the morning. The end time is maybe 5 or 6 or 7 or whenever it is that we decide to be done. But <laughs> so it is, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, you're a Jersey girl. Okay. New Jersey and this. I knew that probably wasn't right. <laughs> so, hey, Linda and Julian, thanks for hopping in today. Um, all right. So we have this event. It's coming up. So keep keep your eyes open. My I'll be posting details on my blog. I will be posting them on my Facebook page. Um, I'll be sharing them kind of everywhere that I can think of to share them. So in my newsletter as well. So make sure that you're, my blog is stampwithamyk.com. So if you are not subscribed to my blog, go subscribe so you'll know what, what the details are. But I'll be sharing a link to the page. And again, anyone's welcome to join us. And um, we'll probably do some fun little giveaways and, you know, a few little games and things. But it's mostly going to be all about making cards and sharing with you guys uh, on World Card Making Day. So let me know if you have questions about that. Um, one other thing I wanted to remind you about is if you have not joined, which I know a couple of you here are on my team, and I'm happy that you're here and saying hey. <laughs> so if you have not joined uh, during Celebration, Stampin' Up! has really got an awesome joining promotion. You get to pick the normal starter kit, which is $99 plus tax if that applies in your area. Everything ships for free. And you get to pick $125 worth of whatever merchandise you would like. And then you get a free uh, bundle of your choice from the 12 listed on this sheet from Stampin' Up! just for joining. So it's an awesome deal. Incredibly good deal. Um, you're also going to get a paper pumpkin kit. It's just a random one, so I don't know which one it will be. Um, and then you're going to get a few business supplies. So, um, And then after that, once you've joined, any order that you place as a demonstrator, you get a 20% discount on. Uh, so if you're interested in joining, give me a holler. Let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you more about it. Okay, so now we really are going to start making the card. <laughs> All right. Um, this card, actually, I did my standard card base, which is the top opening one. Um, this card is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half here on the top. Uh, the card that I, the card base that I'm using today, the, because this works with, you know, cards, whichever card base is your preferred one, um, I have got this one cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. So this is going to be your standard book fold card. And I'm going to start by putting, hopefully I didn't totally make that all crazy on the screen. Um, I've got some, this is like the last of my post-it note tape, so I'm hoping I don't run out. Um, if I do, I have some blue painter's tape. And from what I understand, post-it note is no longer making this stuff, which makes me really sad. It was like the best crafting tool ever. <laughs> That was a non, you know, originally designed for a non-crafting purpose. So um, definitely it works great. It, you can just use regular post-it notes. Just stick them along, whether you do a top fold or a side fold, just stick whatever it is right along the, the score line so that you don't accidentally end up with some ink on the back of the card. Not that it would be terrible, but if you don't want that look, um, definitely make sure you put a little, a little bit of a mask on there of some sort. And then we're just going to take the um, mask from the... Of course, I've forgotten the name already. Adorning something or another. Adorning Designs, um, Creative Masks. Um, take the snowflake one, and we're going to just lay it over the top of the card front. So, hey, Miriam, I'm glad you were joining live today as well. And I know it's, I don't know that you can even get the post-it note tape anymore, Brie. I was so, like I said, I was so sad when they, when I, I went to go buy some more because I knew I was getting low on Amazon, and there isn't any more. And I kind of hunted around and I couldn't find it. So if you find a good spot, for, you know, find some at a place, let me know because I, I would stock up on it too. I would have stocked up if I'd known it was going away. So, all right, so we've got our mask placed over the top of this. And um, I've got Misty Moonlight ink. And I'm just going to take that and a blending brush and just going to rub the blending brush over the ink pad and get a little ink on here. And I'm going to start over here on my grid paper so that I don't end up with any blobs that I don't want on the card front. And then I'm just going to take my blending brush and just go over the card front here, adding a little bit more ink as we go along. There is no special way to put this on or no, um, you know, like certain amount that you should be using or anything like that. The main thing is just kind of, you know, do a swirling motion and that kind of blends the ink and gets it hopefully everywhere. 
Um, you can hold the mask down with your fingers if you're really good at holding the mask down. I am not as good at holding the mask down, um, I discovered as I was playing around with them. So I just use the post-it note tape. If you don't have post-it note tape, but do have blue painter's tape, which I know you can buy that at any hardware store, um, and I think even some craft stores carry it. Um, but standard issue blue painter's tape works as well. Um, the main thing is that you just don't want it to be something sticky enough that it's going to rip your cardstock when you go to peel it up. Um, so that's why the, the post-it note tape works really well on it. So, um, yeah, it is gone. So yeah, I'm sad about that. So, all right. Whoop. And I can see we've got some of them. Uh, you, I don't know how well you can see it, but some of them up at the top, I'm starting to be able to see a little bit better. looks like I need to add a little more ink down here at the bottom. So I'm glad that you're liking this, Diane. It's a fun little card. And like I said, it's, you know, the starting with the, the blending brushes on here. Um, Definitely, like I said, it's just, they're fun to use and easy to use and anybody can do it. And I know I've said this before, but if you have the blending brushes, you don't have to have one for every single color um, that's a Stampin' Up! color. You can definitely just have a couple of them and um, rinse them out in between times. So I'm finding that two packs of them, so six brushes seems to be sufficient for what I need. Um, but you can rinse them out, let them dry, and then reuse them later on if you need to. So, all right, so let me see how we're doing here. This is starting to look a little bit better. So, yep, I'm starting to see it. I'm making sure that um, I've got it mostly covered here with the blending ink before I totally peel everything up. Looks like I need to add a little bit more along this side over here. Um, you still see it on Amazon? Now, I saw some that said it was post-it note tape, but it was like, typewriter tape or something weird so maybe i'll go look again i don't know it was not the the post-it note tape that i was used to seeing um so maybe it's still there and i just didn't find it when i went hunting but last time i looked for it i didn't have any luck finding it so but yeah let me know if you find it so still available it says for label covering up to yeah that's not the right stuff that's like typewriter tape is what it, that's the look i was looking for um so definitely a little bit darker on there and hopefully you can see it on the the camera i know with the bright lights sometimes things like that don't show up as well but um but yeah that's not the right stuff if it's the tape for labeling and covering up i don't think that's the right stuff um but you can try it and see but it definitely it looked like like correction tape that you would use on a like typed stuff when I looked at it last but again I may be wrong I didn't order it because I didn't think it was the right thing so all right so we've got our background done here um, next up I'm going to take my little snowflake and I'm just going to adhere it here with some um, stamp and seal and I don't have to be very neat about the way that I adhere this the main thing that I have to remember is that I want it to go generally in this area because I know that it's going to be covered when I put my larger panel over it. So I don't want to be putting a stamp and seal up there because you're going to be able to see it and it's going to look not very pretty. Um, so I just make sure that it's down here in a spot where it's going to be hidden. And the stamp, stamp and seal is really strong, so you don't need to have it everywhere to hold the snowflake down. Plus you're going to have a layer um, that's going to be adhered over the top of it. So you're going to have that holding it down as well. So you don't need to worry about sticking every little piece of it down unless you really want to. You can use liquid glue if you want to, but um, for me, I find it liquid glue to be kind of messy. So I tend to stick with um, using stamp and seal whenever I possibly can so that I don't, don't end up with a big gluey mess. All right, I have got my little snowman from the Snowbody Better stamp set from Stampin' Up! that I've got here on my block, and I'm using Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, and we are gonna ink up this image. Hopefully I can get a good solid image. If not, we can flip it over and re-stamp it. All right, I think I need to re-ink my ink pad. It's starting to get a little to this point where I have to like really, really, <laughs> you know, make sure I'm going over it 15 times to get it to ink well. So, all right, just stamping it on basic white cardstock. And I'm finding that I'm getting off the screen here, so I'll scooch up just a little bit and make sure that y'all can see what I'm doing. And it looks like we got a pretty decent image with that one. All right, then I'm gonna start grabbing some Stampin' Blends. I've got Just Jade, Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Pumpkin Pie, Misty Moonlight, and then my Color Lifter, just in case I have any goobers or goofs or things that I wanna lighten at all. 
Um, I'm going to start with the light pool party marker. Now you may find my light pool party I've had for a minute or 15 and it colors pretty lightly. Um, so if you find that you are getting your light pool party marker out and it's darker than you want it to be, I can show you in a second a little trick to lighten it um, by using your color lifter. But all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of the light pool party ink around the, the edges of the little snowmen to give them a little bit of dimension. At least that's my, my plan and my hope in doing it. That's what, you know, what I usually try to do when I've got any little snow things here in the background. Let's do a little bit of coloring with the light pool party Stampin' Blends marker. Um, there again, just going around the edges of all the little snowmen faces and their little bodies. So, all right, now down here, I don't know if you can see it, but I did get probably a little heavier handed than I did anywhere else on the card front with this. So all you need to do is take your color lifter, or again, like I said, if your um, light pool party is a little darker than mine is, um, just take your color lifter and take, I use the bullet end because I find that to, to be able to have a little more control and not quite so squishy. Just take the bullet end and color right over the top of it and kind of blend it in a little bit. Here I have some that um, it didn't quite get to the edge, so I'm just going to take this and color over the top of it and just sort of blend in anywhere where I think it's a little bit darker than I want it to be and want it to be a little more muted. Um, just take your color lifter and color right over the top of it and it blends those together really nicely. And then it looks sort of like a shadow of blue as opposed to like a a blue streak down the side of your snowman, which is not really the look that I think you're probably going for. All right, so let's start doing some coloring on the snowman. Um, I've got just jade here, and I'm gonna start with the light. And again, for a lot of this, I typically color with the brush end of my Stampin' Blends, but for a lot of this, the images are small. So, you know, it's a lot of little lines and things like that. So I found it a little bit easier uh, and I had a little bit more control with the little bullet tip on it rather than the brush end of it when I was doing my coloring. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do his hat too, or her hat. I don't know if it's a his or her, the snowman's hat um, as well. And again, it's just jade that I'm using here for coloring and I'm doing every other one. And this is the light just jade. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark just jade. And all I'm gonna do is kind of put little lines along the edge. Again, all I'm trying to do is just add a little bit of darker definition here. So I'm going kind of top and bottom on these. And if I feel like it looks too much, too kind of streaky, then I will just come back in with my light and blend it together a little bit. So there we go, got the light just jade. We can come in and do a little bit of blending if needed. Some of them it looks like I've got a little bit of a streak, some of them not as much. But again, this isn't really scientific coloring. Um, it's pretty easy actually. Uh, I'm gonna come in then with my um, light misty moonlight. And again, do the same thing here where I'm gonna be coloring in the opposite of my little snowman scarf. I guess it's his scarf, not just not the snowman that I'm coloring this time. And that's the only thing you have to be kind of careful of with this stamp set, even though it, although it really doesn't matter that much because it's just kind of a fun little image. Um, but you do have to be a little careful and make sure that you're coloring the spot you want to color and not the spot on the next over snowman's scarf or something like that, <laughs> because that can kind of easily happen when you have the little images like this grouped together. Um, but for the most part, this one is pretty easy to color. I say that and I'll probably mess it up. That's usually what I say right before I make a mess of something. <laughs> so, hey, you know, I'm glad that you're here and uh, no worries on being a little bit late. I usually run late myself. So, um, as most of the people on my team know. All right, I've got light poppy parade that we're gonna be doing a little coloring on this one. This looked like kind of a fancy lady to me. So I did um, poppy parade because I thought she looked like someone who would wear red. <laughs> and I don't know why, I just kind of picked random colors for the snowman, but I thought she looked like somebody who would definitely wear red or something bright. So, and I'm assuming it's a she. I don't even know that it's a she. This snow person, snowman, snow woman, whatever it is, looked like they were in bright, into bright colors. The little smile on the face and, and uh, the crazy kind of, I don't know, furry looking scarf made me think that. All right, coming back in with the dark poppy parade. 
And again, just kind of doing the same thing on this one, just adding a little bit of dark around the edges um, and kind of in here underneath the chin and in places where I think that there would be a little shadow. And that's it. So adding a little here, a little up there. And then I'm gonna grab Just Jade again. And that is what I colored in the little bow on this snow person's. I guess, are they snow gifts, snowball gifts? I don't know what you call them for sure. And a little dot on the top of the hat. So coloring this all. And again, I'm bringing in the dark here and trying to put that in places where I thought that there would be a little shadow. And this one up here, I did in Just Jade and um, Misty Moonlight as well. So I'm gonna be doing again, whoop, is this the dark? Whoop, that's dark. I almost started coloring with the wrong one. <laughs> Grab the light, Just Jade. And we're gonna start it by coloring his little, and I don't know why I assumed this is a him, but I assumed it was a him. And I'm gonna color in some of the stripes here on the hat. And I think we'll color that in as a stripe and then do the little dot on the top. And whoop, almost grabbed the wrong one there. Too many markers laying around here. All right, got um, light, misty moonlight that I'm coming in. Hopefully I grabbed the light one. Yes, I did. Double checking. And I forgot to color with my dark on here, but that's okay. We'll come back in a second and do that. Um, so again, light, misty moonlight on the bow. And we're gonna come back in here with a little bit of the dark misty moonlight along the edges. And again, in places where I feel like there'd be a little shadow. And I'm not an excellent person at coloring, so I don't pay that much attention to the shadows. I just go where I think they should be and um, call it good. So that's the fun about playing with the blends is you get to kind of pick and decide the way you want it to look. And um, that is all there is to it. So, all right. Hey, Jamie, thanks for hopping in. All right, the little hat on this one, this snow person, I did um, just in shades of pool party. So I used light um, to color the most of it and then came back in with the dark to color in the rest so again just doing a little light and dark mixture there and kind of going every whoops I grabbed the wrong end on that one so this is the dark pool party coming in here and doing a little bit of coloring um I think we'll do we'll kind of do it as a almost like a checkered pattern on this one I'm not sure exactly how I colored it on the last one. I wasn't looking very carefully, <laughs> but I think we'll call that good. And then this one I did in the Just Jade and um, Poppy Parade inks. So I'm gonna do Just Jade on the background of the hat. And this is my, should be my light Just Jade. At least that was my plan as to one I was gonna pick up. Um, so again, when I'm coloring, I generally tend to start with the light first because I can always add more color to it. It's, you can take color away with the color lifter, but it's a little bit more difficult and requires a little more patience and a little more layering of ink. Um, so I tend to start with the, with the light and then add a little dark in, um, and that usually works pretty well for me. All right, we've got, whoa, goodness, I just pulled my whole marker apart. <laughs> All right. Apparently I am stronger than I realized. Roar. There we go. All right. Um, gonna do a little bit of light um, poppy parade. I almost called this pool party and I knew that was not the right color. And we're gonna do that on as the little dots and the bow on the gift. And then we're gonna come in with the dark and sort of do the same thing here with a little bit of poppy parade around the, the dark poppy parade around the edges. And then I think we're gonna color the bird also poppy parade. Now I'm all hesitant. I pulled my marker apart again. Apparently I need to get a new one of these or glue it one or the other. All right, let's get light poppy parade around the bird. And then we're gonna add a little bit of the dark poppy parade around the bottom. And then we just have noses left to color and um, we'll be done with the, with the majority of the card front. Um, I did use pumpkin pie, again, light and dark for the pumpkin pie for the noses on them. So, because I think they're supposed to be carrots, at least that's what I'm calling them as carrots. And doing the light first, and then just gonna come back in and do a little bit of touching up here with the dark kind of around um, where it goes, where it sticks to the body of the snowman and a little bit out from there. 
And that's it for the coloring. I don't know if you can see it on here, but I did get a little crazy with my pumpkin pie and got him, you know, he's got a little, what looks like something unpleasant hanging out of his nose. And we just fixed that. <laughs> so just take your color lifter and push it right back in. Um, I did notice as I was coloring here that I forgot to color the little edges of the snow gifts with my um, light pool party marker. So I'm just coming back in and adding a little bit of color to give that a little bit of definition as well. And that's it for the coloring. So it's super easy to color and um, very flexible. You can choose whatever colors it is that you like best and uh, just put your card together based on the colors that you pick for your snowman. Um, next up, I'm going to do a little die cutting with the um, third from the largest stitched rectangle die. And I'm gonna, when I cut it out, I'm gonna slide it so that there's a little extra space down here because I'm gonna be adding my sentiment on the bottom part of the card. So I wanna make sure that I'm cutting up closer to the top. So I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine over here to my right. Hopefully y'all are enjoying your day, having a fantastic Tuesday. And, all right, there we go. Got that done. We're gonna take a couple little stampin' dimensionals to adhere this to the card front. Then we're gonna stamp the sentiment here in a second. And we'll be pretty well done with the card. Well, the card front, inside of the card. Whoop, I got that one all sorts of crazy. Goodness, well, let me roll that little thing right off of there and toss that one out and we'll get another one. <laughs> I didn't want that sticking off the top of the card. All right, there we go, that's better. All right, now I use my little half stampin' dimensionals, and again, I know everybody has their own opinion on them. I love the half stampin' dimensionals. I just chop them right in half. Um, some people don't love them as much, and that's okay. We all have our different things we like and don't like, so just adhere that to the card front. Next up, we're gonna do a little um, stamping with Versamark and heat embossing. Oh, you're having a, a tropical storm there? Ay, yuck. Hopefully you don't get flooded. It was bad here a couple weeks ago. So um, got Versamark ink and the sentiment from the Snow Buddy Better stamp set. And we're just gonna stamp it here on a piece of Just Jade cardstock. And it doesn't really matter where I stamp it at on, on this panel because I'm gonna be die cutting it anyway. So as long as it's reasonably centered, um, it'll work. You know, I totally realized I forgot to stamp my snow images around my snowman before I glued it down. So we may have to peel it up and try it again. Goodness, all right, got a couple little extra flecks here. And you probably all were screaming at me saying, stamp the snowflakes. All right, I'm gonna do some heat embossing with the heat tool here. Stampin' Up's heat tool has two settings on it. Level one setting is for drying. So if you do watercoloring or something like that, you can use the level one setting to dry your papers quickly. And level two setting is heat embossing. And just gonna put the heat tool on it until it turns shiny and white, bright white, and then it's done cooking. All right, so there we go. Got our sentiment done, and we're gonna cut that out with the picture this dies, which of course I did not grab, so hang on. This is what happens when I think I'm all organized. I never am. <laughs> So, all right, so I've got the picture of this dies. Uh, this is a great die set. Um, I'm just actually gonna use the center one out of here. So, and we're gonna put it right around the sentiment and do a little die cutting with that. Hey, Jan, thanks for hopping in. I'm glad to see you here as well. And Jeanne is here too, so welcome and thanks for hopping in and saying hello. All right. Okay, so we've got the sentiment die cut all done. And I think I'm going to show you my, I showed you once how to, to uh, fix when I messed up and stuck the dimensional on all crazy. We will just do a quick little snip snip. If you slide your paper snips or scissors in between the layers and cut your stamp and dimensionals kind of right in half, then you can easily remove your paper from the card front. This is a teaching moment. See, I intended to do this. <laughs> Wanted to show you how I fixed it when I messed things up. So, all right, then these roll off the back actually pretty easily. And um, they just kind of, if you take your thumb or finger, thumb, whatever, and just sort of roll them off the back, 
uh, then you can get back to your flat piece of cardstock and stamp on it the snowflakes that you were supposed to stamp on it to begin with. All right, so let's do this. Pool party ink, <laughs> stamping the snowflakes around here. And we'll pretend like I didn't totally mess it up and um, forget to do that the first time. So there we are, stamping a few little, little snowflakes around the edges in pool party ink. All right, again, like you didn't even, oh, I, up at the top, it looks like there's a little naked spot, so. All right, we'll stick a little snowflake up there, so. Um, yes, definitely it works much better if you slide the, the scissors down in between the two, and then you can kind of roll the, the um, dimensional, the leftovers, whatever, the other half of it that's still on the card, sort of roll them off. And you don't have to get everything perfectly off as long as you're sticking it back in the same spot, um, as long as you get most of it. Um, you're good to go. And then just put down some new dimensionals and as I wiggle the screen like crazy. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, just looked up and realized that the whole screen was wiggling as I was moving my um, rolling the stamp of dimensionals off. So now I've got stamp of dimensionals gunk stuck all over me. All right, goodness. Okay, I'll try not to mess up anything else. <laughs> I can't make any guarantees though. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. It looked a little plain to me earlier. Um, I've got some stamp and seal here that we are gonna adhere the sentiment onto the card front. Um, again, just because I wanted to keep this one a little flatter because uh, Christmas time is sort of expensive anyway. So I try to keep minimize the uh, amount of layers I put on my Christmas cards so that I don't have to pay all the extra postage fees. So oh, thanks, Naoka, I'm so glad that you like it. So I've got um, some of the blue adhesive back dots and I'm just gonna take one of the big ones and we're gonna stick it over here and one of the smaller ones and we're gonna stick it here on the sentiment. And that's it for the card front, so super easy. The inside of the card, uh, let me grab hopefully the right color of ink pad. We've got Misty Moonlight ink and again the sentiment from the Christmas to Remember stamp set. And I'm gonna ink it up, stamp it here, hopefully in the center and kind of straight, which I think we got both of those pretty well. And then I'm gonna take my little snowball image, which of course I didn't put on a block either because I guess I thought I was gonna do all this on screen for you. I don't know why, <laughs> mostly just because I forgot. Um, let me switch this over, take the snowflakes off and uh, put the little snowball on. And we've got, again, Tuxedo Black Memento ink. We're gonna be inking up the little snowball and putting it right underneath the sentiment. We're gonna add a little bit of color with the light, hopefully, yep, light pool party Stampin' Blends marker. Um, just add a little bit of color around the snow. And again, I can bring my color lifter in if I feel like I got a little heavy handed with it and lift a little bit of the color and move it around a little bit. And then I think we will do the bow as just jade on this one. I can't remember what color I did it on the other card, but we're gonna use just jade for this one. And I'm starting again with the light just jade Stampin' Blends marker, adding in a little bit of dark, and we'll be all done with the inside of the card. All right, let me grab some stamp and seal to uh, get this adhered. And yeah, making the flag, it's amazing how much that extra postage adds up when you're sending out a huge pile of cards and all of a sudden all of them require the extra 20 cents or whatever it is that the post office charges now for the, the um, extra ounce or the extra thickness of the, the cards. So using a little stamp and seal to adhere it together. Then I'm gonna grab my bone folder and do a quick crease down the side. And I have dimensional pieces stuck on everything. <laughs> on my thumb and um that's it for the card today so uh glad i could show you how to fix my little goof there and you know chop the dimensionals apart and uh, that's it it's a super simple card and i think kind of cute i love the stamp set so definitely one you should put on your list of must gets um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be posting all the details for this card out on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com, and I will share a, the link in the, the description of this um, video as soon as the blog post goes live. So thanks for joining. I will actually be out of town on Friday, so I will not be doing my usual YouTube live at 2 o'clock Eastern time, but I will be back next week, Tuesday, around 2 o'clock Eastern time to um, do a live here out on Facebook. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, we will uh, chat with y'all soon. Have a great week.